Hello, you beautiful being, and welcome to the third entry in my balls game devlog. I'm Kitsune Fuzzy, and let me show you what is new in my project this week. My main goal was to at least get started with improving the graphics and working out some details for the first world theme, so let's get started. In my last devlog video, I asked the things you would like to see in this game, and thank you for your suggestions, two of which I've already implemented. First was Ben W Man suggesting bounce pads, and I can easily see how useful these things can be in this game. So I directly started working on them. With a quick model and animations at hand, I started creating the blueprint actor. So that we can actually make a hit bounce the ball. In my opinion, the bounce pads need a cool jelly or candy material. To make that, I followed a slime material tutorial, but adjusted some things to fit the bounce pads better. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. But at that point I was facing a difficult decision. I could either conserve the ball's movement and add a force and have it be more realistic but inconsistent bounciness, or replace the ball's velocity with the bounce direction and get a more reliable bounciness. So I made a toggle in case I ever changed my mind, but I went with replacing the velocity. Some playtesting just showed that it was way easier to control, and that in my opinion is more important. The second idea that I added to the game were dash panels, suggested by Bendy. Thank you Bendy for your suggestion! After just a quick attempt to create the textures for this thing in Photoshop, I realized I have to face one of my fears. Node-based texture generation. But all worry aside, it went better than expected. I'm starting to get a hang of these node-based procedural generation stuff, slowly but surely. So with all textures at hand, I had to create a material for it. And I wanted it to be scrolling, not smoothly, but in steps with the dots on the texture. A bit of rounding down values, multiplying and dividing, I got what I wanted. Now for the blueprint and functionality. I made it so that when you touch it, you immediately get a big speed boost. But that alone wasn't enough. I also gave a lower speed boost for as long as we stay on the dash panel. And the results look just fabulous if you ask me. There were a few more really good suggestions that I will definitely tackle at a later point. Now it was time to work on improving the graphics and developing a style for the first actual world. My first idea was to build some tiles that I can then place in the editor to build levels. And I experimented with a few ways to build these and they seemed okay. Some attempts were better, some worse, but there was still a lot of manual work involved. Anyway, it became some reference material to try things out on visually. Like this bad boy of a material. A triplanar, parallax occlusion mapped material with a top-down projected scalable pattern. BAM! That's the word. To give me this sweet looking fuzzy carpet grass style. This material can fit so many shader instructions and texture lookups it's not even funny. But Unruh says it's A-OK. -okay. Since I want to make the first world a shadowy forest area, I got an idea about the light. Unreal allows you to add materials to light sources, so I made some scrolling noise shadows to move across the world. Simple and effective. Doesn't it look cool? I was still a bit worried about level creation, but then it hit me. I faintly remember that there was a Blender to Unreal Link plugin somewhere. And oh my god, is this amazing! I can just model whatever I need in Blender, and with the click of a single button, it gets sent directly to Unreal without any further manual importing to do. Ah, this is so amazing! So now I can easily ditch the tile-based level building approach and just build what I like in Blender. I tried figuring out a fast way to get the level style I wanted, like those bump rims on the side of platforms. At first I manually extracted the mesh borders, converted them to a curve, gave them thickness, but I made an attempt with geometry nodes. And now after days of trying to develop a quick and easy way to build levels, I'm finally here. I just build what I like and crease the edges where I like to have rims, boom, done. I absolutely love this. And when I change something in Blender, just send it to Unreal and it's immediately ready to playtest. It's moments like these what I live for. My joy and happiness is indescribable. But in real life joy never lasts long. I followed a tutorial on geometry nodes in Blender to dynamically build a bridge. And after all that, 
after hours of doing this tutorial and doing the nodes and everything, it turns out geometry nodes have a really hard time with building the UVs needed for texturing the meshes, especially when it comes to exporting them to game engines. I still have a few things I want to change here anyway that might alleviate some of the problems. I also need to add more decorative objects to the level, but that will have to wait for a future video since I now have to edit this video to have it ready for Screenshot Saturday. And if you want to follow the development of this project, hit the subscribe button and leave a like. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I hope to see you all next time. Bye!